Today I am proud to say that under the UK's presidency, the group of the world's seven most advanced economies, the G7, is launching a set of public policy principles for retail central bank digital currencies, CBDCs. Central bank digital currencies could be a digital version of money, a bit like a digital banknote that could be used alongside physical notes and coins. Unlike most of the digital money people use daily today, it would be issued directly by a central bank, like the Bank of England in the UK. And governments and central banks across the world are working together, looking into what having a digital currency might mean in practice. This includes issues that people care about, such as ensuring users' money would be safe and secure, that it could work with other ways to pay, would be energy efficient and available to everyone. A potential CBDC could offer businesses and consumers new ways to pay in the future. It's all part of the wider story of digital innovation that has delivered benefits to millions around the world and in the UK. The decision on whether to launch a central bank digital currency is for each country to make, and no G7 jurisdiction has yet made that choice. These decisions raise important questions about the reshaping of our economy, financial systems, and the way in which people interact with money and payments. That's why working together and careful evaluation with our international partners is essential. In the UK earlier this year, I announced a new joint task force between the Treasury and the Bank of England to look into a potential CBDC as a complement to cash and bank deposits. We're also hearing from firms, technology experts and others. Under the leadership of the UK, this report today will help support and inform exploration of CBDCs in the G7 and beyond. With these principles, the G7 is leading an important step change in the global policy conversation. The report covers a range of important matters, such as financial stability, cyber resilience, energy efficiency, privacy, inclusion, and tackling illicit finance. These factors should all be considered when designing and potentially delivering a CBDC that would be fit for the future. Our shared objective is to ensure that CBDCs would be grounded in long-standing commitments to transparency, the rule of law and sound economic governance. The G7 will continue its work in this important area, working with others to enhance understanding and use of these principles. We're excited to be taking a leading role with G7 members in publishing this exploratory work, bringing money and finance into the 21st century. So as you just heard, the UK has already announced the start of CBDCs. What company could they be dealing with to create such a technology? Let's find out. The Federal Reserve began looking for faster payments options. Two years later, an action plan was born and a Federal Payments Task Force was created. It included one company focused on crypto, Ripple. In 2014, the World Bank and Better Than Cash Alliance, which includes the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Clinton Global Initiative, and the governments of 32 countries, put out a report called The Opportunities of Digitizing Payments. One year later, the Better Than Cash Alliance featured one crypto company on their website, Ripple. Today, Better Than Cash Alliance and all other UN initiatives are focused on a single agenda, the Sustainable Development Goals for 2030. 30. You can see the SDGs logo on Bill Gates' lapel, world leading companies, the Better Than Cash Alliance website, and on the UN's official exchange, Exchange. What crypto is Exchange officially utilizing for their carbon credit solution? XRP. The world will move to a new international standard for exchanging electronic messages between financial institutions by 2025 called ISO 20022. Who was the first ISO 20022 member focused on distributed ledger technology? Ripple. Who's partnered with over 300 financial institutions, including Bank of America, American Express, PNC, Santander, SBI, HSBC, Standard Chartered Bank, Bank of England, India, Singapore, Scotland, Australia, and Indonesia, the largest banks in Japan, Canada, Egypt, the Middle East, United Arab Emirates, Thailand, Morocco, Bhutan, South Korea, Brazil, and Latin America, Ripple, who is a former employee overseeing the Federal Reserve, Ripple, a former employee overseeing the world's largest asset manager, BlackRock's Digital Asset Division, Ripple, leading Australia's CBDC effort, Ripple, who hired a former Treasury of the United States, Ripple, two former Federal Reserve attorneys to their board, Ripple, two former Clinton and Obama advisors, former Minister of Defense and Economics of Germany, former business director at Swift, former Swift board member, former CFO of PayPal, former head of the DTCC, former chief business officer at Uber, former VP of Amazon, and former SEC chair on their legal team, Ripple, who's a member of the Digital Pound Foundation, Digital Dollar Project, Digital Euro Association, Mojaloop, IMF's high-level advisory board on fintech, Hyperledger Blockchain Consortium, Open Payments Coalition, Faster Payments Council, Global Payments Steering Group, Cross-Border Working Group, International Association for Trusted Blockchain Applications, Crypto Climate Accord, University Blockchain Initiative, Worldwide Web Consortium, and a featured partner of the World Economic 
form with three members of their team directly listed on the WF website, Ripple. Now, does Ripple and XRP sound they're, like they're going to They sound like they're part of a much bigger plan. 